before we get into the film, we're going to, st to start by talking about the concepts and the roles and responsibilities of each of the players on how on the tactics of how we're going to attack the channels and get in behind Loudon this weekend. The first thing we must understand is recognizing the defensive line and the space that we're trying to attack. Obviously, wherever the back line is, is set up, the 10 to 15 yards behind them is the space that we're trying to attack. Each of the players has a specific channel and, and, and type of run that we want to, to, to attack this weekend. And you must recognize and understand when and where to do those. Starting with the 7, 9, and 11, we have these specific runs that we want to look for. The number 9 should be positioned in between the 4 and 5, almost at all times. Working off the back shoulder of either player, looking to get into the channels behind number 4 and 5. The number 7 and 11 have similar roles, but they're working off the outside backs, off the 2 and 3. Either a vertical run up field or a diagonal run in behind to create create a, an option for a deep attack. The 8 and 10 also have responsibility of getting in behind. They de make deep runs from the midfield, which are hard to track, and if well-timed, can create very good opportunities. We scored against Loudon and at the first goal with, from a similar type run. These are the channels that they can look to attack at any point in time. Right? 2 and 3 also have a responsibility to get in behind, but this is also dependent on the rotation and the positioning of the 7 and 11. You must first recognize when they vacated the space and then look to overlap and step into the space that is available to you. So if they're checking deep to receive the ball to feet, that's an opportunity to overlap wide. If they're looking to get in behind, 7 and 11 looking to make a diagonal run across the field, you can basically step into the position they just left and be our wide option. Getting in behind has many characteristics, but these are some of the things that I think will help us achieve our goal. First is vision. Vision off the ball. The players off the ball have to have really good vision. It's really easy for players, and it's, it's common for players at this age and this, and this level to ball watch. The players who are thinking a step ahead are the players who are constantly looking for space, constantly looking for options, constantly reading the play. You're looking to see where the ball is, what the ball carry can do. You're looking to see what your, what your other teammates in relation to the closest players around you, the, the connections that you might have, what their runs might look like. And you're looking at the defenders, who's tracking you, who's marking you, what the defensive line looks like, um, what spaces are they giving you. Vision is what allows you to see all of that. Right? When the ball is moving and you don't have it at your feet, that's your opportunity to constantly look around every two to three seconds and create snapshots. Those snapshots create in your mind, allow you to think quickly when the ball does come to you, when the ball does come towards your area. Then you can then make a quick decision, run in behind, check in short, whatever it is. But vision, the starting point is having good vision. And you'll see from the video, there's a lot of ball watching on the field. Players are stagnant because they're basically mesmerized by the ball. They're mesmerized by what's going on away from them. And they're not recognizing that eventually when the ball does come to them, they must be ready. So instead of being a reactionary player, which is what most of our, our players and players that we play against are, you, you can be a player that can anticipate. With good vision, that allows you to do that. The second part that I think that is important for getting in behind is the intensity of the run. There are a few times where, and it's when it's obvious, players recognize that they need to make a hard run. But most of the times they make it a kind of a, a, a stagnant run. It's, it's half speed, it's standing and holding your hand, and you're not gonna get open against good players if you make a half speed run, or if you're standing and holding your hands. You need to make a hard run. Two things happen when, that, when, when you do that. First, you create an advantage against the defender. Usually the defender is ball watching or shifting in one direction and then a hard run is hard to track, it's hard to keep up with and you don't have to be faster than them. You just have to have well timing and make a good speed, make a good run with speed. The other part is the faster and harder you run, the more communication, it's a, it's a visual cue for the player on the ball to recognize that you are open, right? 
and that the urgency is there for you, them to get you the ball. If you run half speed, they won't see you. You just look like another player that's just shifting with the play. But if you flash across the line or you flash into space, the ball carrier, you sometimes make the decision for the ball carrier because then they recognize, oh, that's the urgency. I got to get the ball to that person. So the intensity to run is something that's very important. The last thing is just understanding the triggers and some of the common triggers um, for when to run in behind. The easiest one that, I've, that I think all of us can be aware of and all of us can really use is the counter run. And what that means is runs against the direction of play. When the ball is moving from left to right or right to left, the players on the weak side of the play have an opportunity to test the line because if you understand defensive responsibilities, they're shifting, right? And a lot of players will continue to watch the ball as they shift. That's your opportunity to sneak across them. There's two things that happen there. One, they're not aware of the run. But then two, they're, because their momentum's taking the other direction, your run is now more open, right? Because you're sh they're shifting one way and you're running the other. So a counter run, a run against the, the, the grain of play, uh, the direction of play, is a run that is it, that we need to use this weekend. The second part is recognizing when Another trigger, sorry, is when you recognize when the defender is ball watching. Again, you're not playing against the world stars of the world. And even the best players in the world will, will sometimes break down and, make, and ball watch. Every player loses focus at times during the game. They're either fatigued right, mentally or physically, and they're just watching. They're spectators. And it's in those moments you have to recognize that. This is where the vision comes into play. That you recognize my defender's not tracking, my defender's not closing now, closing the gaps between the lines, and then you can exploit that space. And the last is, if you do have a defender who is aggressive and is focused and concentrating, is, is tracking you, is marking you, is keeping up with you, you have to lose him. And by that, I mean you need to deceive him and decep uh, use deception to create space for yourself. So you're not just making singular runs. You're making double moves type runs where you're checking and going. Right? You have to confuse him with your movement. This is higher level, right? The harder, the, the better defender you play, the higher the level, the more deception you need to create space. Players won't fall for the simple stuff, so you not have to deceive them with a check and go. You check short and go long. And while you're doing those movements, it's your vision. You check, you look to see what they're doing that allows you to recognize those moments, then go, right? It's not as simple as, it's not mechanical. You're not just checking and going. You're checking to the ball, Seeing if they if they move with you, are they aggressive? Are they coming hard? And then you try to exploit space in behind that they leave. Loudon is a team that presses that has a high line, but doesn't press high. And you'll see from the video, they it leaves a lot of space for us to attack. Probably thirty or forty yards worth of space. Any ball when we had the ball in our back line, any ball that's ten yards past the back line into space with a good run, a good hard run where we're losing our player and getting it behind them is an opportunity for us to score. Now we don't normally attack that this list. I think that's why I think that's why we probably struggle to see these things. But you'll see from the video it's wide open for us to, to, to attack. When our back line has the ball and any player has the ball and they have time on the ball, that is the playmaker. That that is the QB for example. Uh, and we need a deep threat. Whenever there's t the player has time, it's facing up field, they are the playmaker. They are the ones that's look that are looking for options. And it's in those moments, or, or as that player is receiving the ball and we can recognize and anticipate, it's in those moments that we need players to threaten the line. And the more we threaten, the more we threaten, the more they'll give up space either in front of them or they'll make a breakdown, they'll break down and make and give a space in behind them. But we have to threaten. You'll see many times we just stand. Right? We, we're used to building through the midfield. We're not used to having to make play direct. Right? But this is intelligent direct ball, direct ball, direct play. We're not necessarily just hitting long and hoping. We're trying to find people into, into good spaces. So when the, the back line, you'll see, when you watch the film, Loudon is high, almost at half field, but not pressing. There's about 30 or 40 yards that a good ball, well-weighted ball, and a well-timed run could easily get in behind. And we do it a few times, but the ball is either short, the run isn't there, whatever it is. 
but fail, we failed to exploit that space. But tomorrow's game, we definitely have to exploit this space. It's there for us. When the ball is in, in, at the, with a back back four, that's a deep attack. Okay, the ball is on the front side of the, their forwards, and we're having to play probably a 30 or 40 yards ball. That's when we have a lot of space to play. At Sometimes they do drop deep, or when we build our attack, they have to drop deep, obviously. And the, the play is coming from our midfielders, midfielders, so 8, 10, and 6, or our wide backs in, a, in an advanced position. At that time, the space isn't as big, but the runs are still there. The space is still there for us to exploit. It's probably 20 yards or 15 yards, but it's still there for us to attack. The last thing you'll see in the video, and I just wanted to di diagram it here as well, is how much space they give up on the weak side. As we shift to one side, or as we work the ball to one side of the field, they overshift, in my opinion. They, they have too many players towards uh, in the spaces around the ball, and it looks like they're trying to prevent any play through them down the side. And they do a decent job of making it hard for you to get the ball to the feet of the forward from a wide position. This isn't perfect, but they do commit a lot of numbers in there to try to, to clog the space and win the ball and attack quickly. But for us, the space, that, the zones that we want to take when the, the attack when the ball is wide is the space that's occupied by two, eight, and seven. Right, two and seven are uh, occupying a wide zone. Right, seven is looking to get a, run along the line as, as using a counter run, and and two is looking to overlap. Eight is in a space that is what I would call the weak sides. Uh, midfield space that is available to us when we switch and if we want to play to feet that's the player that we're looking to find and you'll see different combination different rotations between these th three players sometimes eight will run long seven will run in right sometimes eight will stay where they are and seven will run in and two usually works off of seven depending on what, what his position even in this instance though you'll see in the film that nine and eleven still can attack the space in behind but really what we have to focus on is switching the point of attack quickly, either using a backward pass and then a lateral pass to get the ball to eight, or some kind of combination play that gets us through the midfield quickly to number eight or number 10 on the other, if it was on the other side, in a space between their weak side forward and their weak side defender. It's, in, it's that space that if we want to, as we move up the field, you'll see there's opportunities for us to overload their weak side. It's about ball movement, quick ball movement, and then and penetration. So switch, penetrate, and overload them to one side of the field.